I'm doing 30 minutes of psychic wisdom and energy healing for Lush today. Lush, thank you so very much for another opportunity to connect with you. Thank you for sharing with us here on YouTube. I'm gonna put links in the description to previous sessions I've done with Lush, super worth checking out. And if any of you guys are interested in working with me one-on-one -on -one for an individual session, go to my website, abbynormalswisdomquest.com. You can book individual sessions out there. I'm also offering live group experiences where we can come together as a group and experience healing, experience some channeled wisdom, heal the world. I have a world peace event coming up soon. It's a free thing. You can join it. You should join it. <laughs> I'm also on Patreon. If you're interested in checking out my Patreon community, patreon.com slash Abby Normals Wisdom Quest. Doing live streams out there, reduced cost sessions. There's a lot of fun stuff coming up, so you should really check it out. I'm gonna get your session done now, Lush. <laughs> I said all that juicy stuff, and now we're gonna go into some really juicy stuff here. I'm gonna read your goals. I'm really excited to work with Seth today, by the way. So you say, your intentions for this session is a healing style session with Seth, healing my heart. Okay. <sighs> healing style session with Seth. Hmm. It's interesting. Hmm. I feel like there's something pretty darn meaningful here. And I'm not... It's almost like you have to acclimate to that kind of meaning. And you can't just access that meaning in one day. It's like something you access over a long, 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 long period of time. It's like the meaning of life. The meaning of life is not something you understand in a day or even in a lifetime. It's like something you understand over unfathomable time. You become the meaning of life. You know what I mean? When I read your goals, I just feel like I'm in this like tunnel of, of depth and I'm, I'm acclimating to it, but it's, it's like a time. There's a process of time involved. Healing style session with Seth, healing my heart. Okay. This is going to be really meaningful. All right. Seth. Okay, this is where Seth is taking me. It's the ocean, okay? And it's got very articulated waves. So it's like lots of W's, okay? Kind of like, like that. There are mountains, there are many mountains, there are... He wants us to sit down and he wants us to, it's just take in the view, it's what it is. It's like disconnect all the cords from your mind, from everything that you think is important, everything that you think is your identity even. It just completely just, just let everything disconnect, even your relationship with I exist or I am or I am here in this moment. I am lush. It's it's like you you kind of just like a silent and I don't, I don't want to say nothingness because you're in everythingness, but you know what that means like when you just disconnect from everything and you just zone out completely to the point that it's almost like you don't even know where you're at in time. You don't even really are you're not even really inspiring your thoughts. It just you're just a, just being. And we're talking about the ocean here. Because I'm telling Seth, I thought uh, the, the image of the ocean here was interesting because it was almost too perfect. But then the waves started to become so pointy, almost cartoony, in the midst of something very organic and very natural. I couldn't help but notice that, and I wondered if there was some kind of message in the waves, you know. But he is saying just disconnect. 
Just disconnect. You don't have to make sense of anything when you disconnect. You just, you're just being right now. Interesting, we're starting with the mind in order to heal the heart. We're going somewhere. We're still sitting on the beach, but it's not, it's, it's, there's no doubt about it. We can sense it that we are traveling. And in another version of the exact same scene, I see our energy bodies are moving like lightning fast through shapes, <laughs> shapes in the universe. And they're different colored shapes and they're glowing. Something in in this lightning fast movement, it it's a, kind of in between being human and being free as a soul. And I kind of feel that something is missing in the human experience that I I feel free as the spirit just traversing the shapes and going lightning fast and I'm free to follow the will of some uh, some other kind of intuition. And it just drives me. But we're going to let go of the human some more and some more and some more. So we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to continue to travel, okay? Because we're going to let go of everything that is human. Hmm. I can't help but notice things and I'm telling Seth that when we let go of being human, it, it's like the ultimate nap. But even after a nap, you still wake up, you still have to keep going. And I feel like we're taking the ultimate nap and we could be traversing millions of years of time and split seconds of time. This could be just like a one minute meditation on a beach and you slingshot back into yourself and not realize millions of years have passed as you're traversing the shapes of the universe. But there's a real need to disconnect from being human. And Seth is very adamant about this. That is going to help you in every way. And what we mean is right now, okay? So we're accomplishing that right now in this session, energetically. We are energetically supporting the, the detachment, you could say, <laughs> to just set your soul free for a while. And all the heavy burdens and the memories and the, everything that molds and shapes us into how we feel and how we, how we live our lives and how we remember living our lives and how we've been treated and all that stuff, it just, it just vaporizes because it can, because it can for a time. And that could be very therapeutic. It's like a reset button. This is literally accomplishing a reset button. I'm like getting so excited more than, <laughs> more than I, I'm really trying to contain myself here. You cannot deny flying through shapes in the universe is fun. <laughs> Disconnecting from the human body and being free is freaking fun. You know, million years of time. Oh my God, I don't even care. But it's, it's actually just, it's an intuition. We, we're like our consciousness just, we go where our consciousness goes and we don't ask why we go here. We just go. And there's nothing that can hurt us and we are completely free and we don't hold ourselves back. So there's a sensation of like ultimate joy and freedom of spirit level expression without it existing as an expression. It's just my conscious drives me. 
Nothing is holding back this energy of self, you know, of your soul. I needed to express that because it's so joyful. And then we got this like hum drum, like um, hum bah humbug, like this human like drab on the beach. I know what I know what makes us feel like like an old coat pulled out of the closet that smells like mothballs. I know. <laughs> How do we refresh that? How do we bring that back to life? It's not even in style anymore. <laughs> we just take it to the goodwill. And that's it's a metaphor for how we feel sometimes. <laughs> and that's kind of what the human is, is expressing itself. But the soul is living a million years and just going through the colorful shapes and the will of the consciousness and... And the longer we, we feel that free, it is really like the reset button that it's, it's bringing something back to totally refresh the spirit of this old coat, this human. So interesting. I have got to make another detail because when I do heart healing, I expect to go into the heart. That makes sense, right? But there's no doubt about a reset button in the spirit of yourself is the heart of who you are. And a lot of this is inspired by disconnect, um, a soul level to the depth of the human level. It's like, again, we're, we see the human on the beach staring into the waves. And this could be mere minutes of just silencing the self. And the spirit is actually slingshotting and, and doing other things. And it's bringing all that energy and all that freedom and all that sensation back so that the human can feel like a reset button. And that's the heart healing that Seth wants to share with you. All right, I feel like I can chill out now. <sighs> There's no doubt about it. Seth has a sense of humor. Like, he gets it. <laughs> because he's kind of watching me, unable to contain myself at times. And <laughs> he, he's, he, he's really pleasant. Because <sighs> I tell him, like, okay, I can contain myself now. I, got, I can do this. <laughs> Which is just let the next thing be revealed. Because I'll be able to hear it and see it. Because if I'm too excited, I can't hear anything over the sound of my own excitement. Okay. All right, this is strange. It, it is an unusual type of a potato, but it's also kind of like a banana. And it's quite large. Like, it's a big thing. And it, it looks like a potato and a banana. And then it's massive, okay? And I see a knife, and it's on a cutting board and a big wooden table, and it's being cut into pieces, okay? Even has the little seeds on the inside, and it's softer than a potato. But it, it represents some kind of root food, like a potato food, but it's got a fruitier taste to it. I see a family and they're praying and this is their meal actually and it, it's not cooked. It is and this is how it is prepared very simply. It is just placed upon the table and then cut into pieces and then people are praying. There's one of them is a little girl and she does not take this food. She doesn't reach her hand out after she's done praying and then take a piece. The next interesting thing about this food is that if you're patient, um, it goes from being soft to being like a chip because it's something in the air is changing its design. And now these are like chips or crackers. And she's still not reaching her hand out to get a, one of these pieces. Nobody is. Everybody's done saying um, a prayer and people are 
I mean, let me just see here. There's one, two, three, four, five people. And then one still standing that had cut this. And they're just waiting. <sighs> Seth is showing me that they said their prayers. The food is uh, changing. But the angelic energy hasn't merged fully with this food yet. The prayer isn't, hasn't fully prepared the food. The food is prepared through prayer. There is no cooking. There is only the acquiring of the food and then placing it upon the table, cutting it to pieces where everyone can take a piece, but nobody eats it until the prayer, everybody prays, and the prayer is what prepares the food to be eaten. That's what Seth is showing us. This looks human to me, but this is not a, a earth type food. And they all know in their heart once the preparation is complete and they can all feel it in their heart that the, it's not complete yet. They don't even question as to why it's taking so long because I'm just... I'm kind of surprised that it's taking this long. They all know instantaneously that they're guided to not eat this food until the next day. So they all leave the table and the food just remains on the table. They just intuitively all know this. They can all feel it in their heart and they all know the same message. They actually all go to sleep. They don't do anything else. They go straight to bed. And I'm shown that something is changing. The food is evaporating from the table and I see it is appearing as energy in their hearts and their hearts are being fed with the food this time, not their mouths, their hearts. I even see that the food is going into their hearts like sprinkles, everybody, and their hearts are turning to light and their hearts are being fed with the food. This is going to uh, be a hardship for the, these people. And this, is a, this isn't just this family, there's more, okay? Because they're evolving. And they're evolving in a way that they will have to adjust to not eating physical food. And it will feel like starvation. They even feel like everybody's dying and starving to death. But they're being in a way that this, okay, equation, I'm being shown equations that, that this society is an equation of the big equation of the universe and the equations are changing. And that means that if the equation was made out of shapes, and, and let's say it was made out of, of squares and circles, just to make it easy, um, the, the squares are, are turning to triangles now. And because that is happening in the equation, then naturally their society is di different. And things are, are different in the schematic. But what I find interesting is they don't question. They all intuitively know that they were fed. And they wake up and they don't think another thought about that food that was on the table or what happened to it. I see though the days are feeling longer and people are sleepier than they've ever been before to the point that they're not attracted to even acquiring the food and putting it on the table. And I see this whole society is going into a sleep state. They're all just sleeping. The last thing anybody ate was, it's like everybody in society ate the same meal. And they, they just prayed over this. Nobody actually put it into their mouth. They were fed that night into their heart. And that was the last thing anybody 
last interaction with food they ever had. But I see them all sleeping. Again, I'm surprised that there's no questioning of anything. They just intuitively are aware. And it makes me kind of surprised and a little sad. I just tell Seth the, the sadness is because they're dying. I feel that... I, I, I feel that they're dying and, and it makes my soul sad. I tell this to Seth, it's, it's undeniable. I, I do honestly feel sad. I just start weeping for them. I just start weeping. I'm literally crying. And I see that all the bodies are are being swallowed up by the planet. That we're talking like thousands of years of time and the planet has grown over everything that once was. And it's all being, the planet is feeding off of the people now. The people once fed off the planet, now the planet is feeding off of the people. And they were still alive even thousands of years later as they're being absorbed into the ground. They're still sleeping. And the reason why they haven't fully died is because they aren't letting go. They have no ability to understand what's going on or because they intuitively trust everything, but they don't actually know how to die. They don't know how to give in. They don't know how to think for themselves or react in their own way, which I actually quite value their style. So there is an energy barrier between the degradation of the body. The spirit energy is still in the bodies. The bodies are like pods inside of their planet. And I see above the planet is still, it's just extraordinary forests. And I no longer weep for them. They're still sleeping. And they turn into to crystal-like stones. And watch this happen. I keep looking at this little girl because I can't stop watching her specifically over anybody else. And she also is one of these stones. And sometimes the stones are more of a lemony color, like yellowy, and some are um, orange in color. You can see through them. And you can see the bodies inside. And they look peaceful. They're completely intuitively trusting without waiver or question. But they don't ever just let go. They don't ever change their nature. They don't ever... They just completely, completely trust... And then they're all on the same page. I say, Seth, I don't, I mean, I'm just like, what happens next? I'm just, it, it seems like nothing's really changing at this point. And I tell Seth that I don't necessarily feel like they need to let go anymore. I feel like they could be f millions, trillions of years, and it doesn't really matter. Seth doesn't like the words, it doesn't really matter. He says not to use those words. And I say, let me see if there's another way I could explain what, it, without saying those words, because... I tell Seth right into his eyes that it, I still feel that, I, I mean, nothing's changing. So if nothing is changing, then, then what is the matter? 
What is the... It, it just is what it is. And then it just... Then this is... That's it? That's that's the end of the story? Because I don't... I don't... That's become so neutral at this point. I don't even understand how these crystal bodies are even impacting this planet or impacting below or above or what their souls are even doing because it, it's gone so completely neutral. It's almost like it has been um, forgotten about. It's uh, completed its purpose and it's so neutral that it is almost like without sound and without purpose. And so when I say it, it doesn't really matter because it's like it's forgotten about. And so it was like, but you, but you still see them and you still know. And have you forgotten? I say no. <laughs> I guess I'm impatient. I was going through the shapes. I kind of like that flying in the universe. This is like forever. And they're peaceful, but they're actually becoming so neutral that they they don't even emit a sound. So are they peaceful? Are they just completely neutral? Hmm. So it's the understanding of the power of the neutral. He asks if uh, you ever... <sighs> okay. He's going to tell us of what we would define as a valueless scenario. Let's say you prepare three years worth of food for a, a an event that might happen or might not happen and you've been doing this your whole life and nothing ever happens and you've gone through um, replenishing this all the time you're replenishing this stock but nothing ever happens so the idea of the importance of the action of that creates this um, lifestyle never really came to the purpose that inspired it in the first place so a lot of time and energy into the possibility of something that never happens and that energy could have been used elsewhere for doing other things right so you could say that was a valueless um investment of your time and energy and was it without purpose? I mean, I say the purpose is in, in the memory and the, the comfort of knowing you always were safe and that you were always protecting yourself from the possibilities of something and that you were doing this so that your life could continue on in the worst of circumstances. So you are choosing to be in control of a possible scenario and that you would have been protecting yourself. So that is the purpose. What's interesting is Seth is showing me from another side that these souls this is a, we're giving of themselves, knowing that there wasn't necessarily a death experience. The evolution was to, to become what is like an infinite time capsule. People that become in timeless people, incarnate and timeless. They were evolving into crystals. And it's like a forevermore because we still haven't gotten to the point in time where maybe the sun blows up and they get sucked into a black hole and maybe that that seems like some new calling here for this race <laughs> but no it's just this it's just this and something of just this lush is actually ridiculously therapeutic for you because it is a, like an infinite slumber that has purpose and it's an evolution that we don't really think of and it is powerful. And to access this memory, actually, 
is what this old coat needs because it's not really it is like the give it you know we're going to donate to goodwill but it's like you're becoming a new coat or you're becoming a new something that may um, be not a coat at all and i see the waves do not move but there's serenity when you open your eyes and all time is stopped and you actually walk on top of the water not inside of it because when all time is stopped it's like the water becomes a stone you literally walk on it and there's something important about this space. Because as you walk on the water, you're actually walking towards what is like a, a bump of land, is what it looks like. And there's a strange door in this bump. You have a golden key and you put it into the keyhole. There's actually no handle. You just turn and then the key becomes like the handle. It's more like a cupboard than a door. It's like, I don't know why the door is reminding me of like the Indian in the cupboard. <laughs> like you put it in there and you turn and then it opens and then it comes to life again. I think that's that story. And so the something about this reminds me of a cupboard more than a door. Like there is an other side to this. You walk through the door. This is like you're walking into a, a new, new dimensional space that is a contained space. My guides want me to just continue to watch. <laughs> As you put the key into this keyhole and turn, and where I see this ocean still, and you're actually suddenly on the other side at the si same exact time which is like inside the cupboard, okay? And it's all dark everywhere. And you put the golden key in at the exact same time as yourself that puts the golden key in at the exact same time on the side with the ocean. And you both open the door and you both, <laughs> let me just watch here. You both disappear. Because your your math is solved, or your purpose is complete, or you you finished the task, you 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 did what you needed to in the mirror of yourself, and you became basically like air. And Seth is is again saying that. Do you have to be somewhere? Do you have to even exist? Do you have to even... Th th Does that make you comfortable? Does that make you feel safer? Like, when I just see you disappear, aren't you supposed to go somewhere? Aren't you supposed to wake up something, you know? And so when I see you disappear, then where did you go? And what even manifested that in the first place? Because something has to be born from something else. But this is also just an, a beautiful anomaly. Because I love the fact that everything just is complete and it, it's like everything just disappears and there's nothing left. There's nothing else. There, it's like we were reading a book. We didn't even get to the end. We thought we were in chapter seven, ten chapters. And it, but then once we reach the end of chapter 7 to get to chapter 8, somehow paralleling also reaches the same page at the same time, and then it just all is over. And because the, that was it. It's like what we think we know, and what we perceive as what comes next, and what would logically come after chapter 7 would be chapter 8, and we would logically have to read all of the chapters in the book, 
to get to the end of the story when it doesn't happen in the most logical way and everything just disappears for no explainable reason. That's actually perfect. Again, serenity is manifesting in your heart right now, Lush, from this. Because it holds you to no responsibility. Not even to the responsibility of having to be. It's like complete and utter just freedom, I, I'd say. And it doesn't it doesn't have to be something that we we think we would know and that we would prefer it in the way that we would know it for it to be our idea of something good. This actually is a serenity moment. This is the ultimate just serenity. Doesn't matter if you would define yourself as human or spirit or consciousness or, or nothingness or air or you wouldn't have to define yourself at all as anything. This is more true to being infinite. And that is going to, that sensation is of divine truth, the depth, and the meaning of life truth is blossoming in your heart without even having to. That's pretty darn cool. Thank you, Lush, for this. That was like a guided meditation for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for watching. <sighs> Hope you all have a great day.